Uh, hey guys, um, I'm back. Um, I uploaded a uh, video of how to play Disaster Piece by Slipknot, and I mentioned uh, in the end of the video that I wanted to do a tutorial on surfacing, and uh, this is the day after. So now I'm, I'm going to do a tutorial on how to play a surfacing by a Slipknot. So um, basically, on the uh, on the album, just to get it straight, the tuning's a little off, like it's like j slightly sharp of normal drop B. So, if you want to play along to the song, um, it's a little, it'll sound a little off, so just tune your guitar a little sharp. You would have to listen on the record for it, because it's not really specific in terms of the tuning. But, um, you could always play it a live recording, because they play it in just straight up drop, like normal drop B, right? Um, so yeah, that's what I'm keeping it in for this lesson, just normal drop B, nothing special, just... Right now, I got my guitar set up clean. Just as a quick reminder, if this is the first video you're watching and, like, I didn't mention my gear, um, it's just uh, this Fender Stratocaster um, running with a uh, tune to drop B with uh, Ernie Ball Slinky Cobalt Strings, 11, uh, 12 to 56 gauge. Um, then that's going straight into my Boss Metal Core Distortion Pedal. That's where I'm getting all my distortion from. And then that goes into a clean channel clean preset because it's a modeling amp in my, in my uh, PV Viper VIP3 100 watt modeling amp and that's going into the pedals going into a clean channel right now I'm in clean right now but yeah that's basically how um, we're going to start the the uh, song so this is an awfully the most of the song is simple except for one part that's really hard which is basically what makes the song hard so without further ado let me get to it let me just turn on my pedal Right, so first you're gonna start out. Um, first riff is kind of gonna be like a. It's kind of hard to explain. There's like different ways. Like I know Mick did a little a bit of a lesson on how to play servicing Mick Thompson, but it was like low quality, and he doesn't tell you what notes to play. He just shows what you're playing. So um, and plus like I've watched live recordings and just and just seeing like him play on that lesson. So that's how I know it's pretty accurate. But um, this is basically, it's kind of weird how you play it. If you hear it on the record, Josh Brainard, the original guitarist for Slipknot, I mean, orig original rhythm guitarist, if you hear it, he's playing in the beginning when the first, because like, okay, this is strictly for rhythm, right? Like I'm not, I don't have the effects that Mick does that where he does like that little, like, you know, that uh, thing on the G string. Um. I don't have the effects, so this is just going to be strictly the rhythm guitar, not none of those like weird sounds that he makes. Um, so Josh Brainard, the original rhythm guitarist, um, on the album, it sounds like he's playing something like this. So basically, that is, you're going to almost, I guess, like just violently tremolo pick the first string, the low B, the, uh, the, the bottom string. So... So you're gonna start off like that, right? So, and then once you do that, then you're gonna do open, and then you're going to do a power chord on the fifth and sixth string on the first fret. So it's like, it's like this. That's how it sounds like, um, but yeah. So yeah, just like tremolo pick, open, and then another open, and then chord on fifth and sixth string on the first fret. Now, um, he just keeps, he's gonna keep doing that until, like, and Mick's gonna do whatever he does until it gets to the part where chord is like, I can't say it because it's a family friendly channel, I can't curse, but uh, he says, you all, and then, um, then the song's gonna start. Now the thing is, they do it live differently. I've seen him do it on the on the lesson that he did um, for like Guitar World or whatever. Um, it sounds like sometimes he'll just do it the way that live, like he'll just do it the same way, like because there's a way that they play it throughout the rest of the song. That and they they play it when they're live. They pretty much play it like that the entire time. But then like uh, when you're playing it on the record. It sounds more like they're playing the original riff that I just showed you. It sounds more like that, 
except they're basically doing just chords, like on the record. In the... Okay, so let me show you. This is how it sounds on the record. Once it gets to the part where Corey yells, and then it gets to the part where the both guitars are playing rhythm. All right. So basically what that is, is that... Um, that is... Except when you're doing like I should like the tremolo riff I showed you earlier. Except, except of like just doing it on the this string, that like fast pick part. You're basically doing it on I basically like all the fifth and sixth string, so it's gonna be chorded. So it's basically the same riff but no single notes, just straight up chords. So it's like this. So, yeah, just same first fret power chord riff that I showed earlier. Um, now, on the lesson, he kind of does that same thing, but then he'll add a palm mute. Like, he'll add a uh, palm mute in between the... So, instead of, like, he'll do this. Especially when he slows the riff down to show it, he's, like, plays it like this. So yeah, in between, you could either just play it like this, or you could play it, that's how the record, or you could play it like this. So in between the, you add, instead of adding an open, you basically palm mute on the fifth and sixth string. So that's how that works. Now, um, next riff is going to be basically... Um, the like the, the verse riffs uh that are that Joss Brainard is playing um now live differently like during the actual album tour when J when Jim Root replaced him because Josh pretty much did all the uh recording on the original album except for like purity or like two or three songs according to Jim and other sources so like once Jim came on like he plays it live differently this part but I've seen I've listened to Jim uh Josh Brainard's like sort of isolated guitar and I've also looked at the lesson that Mick posted, and he also, I mean, Mick uh, did on Guitar World. And uh, he also showed the part that Josh plays, and it basically goes like this. It's like a little octave thingy. Basically, what that is, is that is a... Uh, these are octaves, so it's an octave on the uh, the um, one, two, three, four, five, fifth fret on the A string. I know that, like I said in the first lesson, if you watched it, whenever like I'm referring to the strings, I'm just referring to the names of the strings, like the letters, as if it were in standard tuning, just to make it more simple. I mean, I know the letters are different when you're tuned to drop B, but it just makes it simple, just referring to them as the, uh, you know, um. Like, I'll refer to the biggest string as the low B, but, like, as far as the other strings, I'll just do it, like, like as if we're in standard, because it's easier to cite the strings, and you know what strings they are. So, fifth fret on A string, and then the um, seventh fret on the, uh, on the, the G string, the uh, third string. So, first, and then you have to uh, pick that twice. So, so far we have on these strings and then the next part is going to be like so it's basically like the the two except you're going to move a fret so it's going to be a sixth fret a string and then the eighth fret on the uh yeah that's that, that that's the the eighth fret on the g string so now so 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 now you're going to do this so it's like two here and then you move up, play that once on the 6th uh, and 8th, right? And then you're going to go back and play this once on the 5th uh, the, uh, and 7th. So, two, one, two, one, one. 2, 1, And then you're going to pick on the 5th uh, the and 6th and 7th uh, fret again. So you're going to pick that once, 
but then the next time you pick it, you're gonna, after you do that, then you're gonna pick and you're gonna kind of bend, create this nice like kind of panicky, almost like weird sound with on, on the same frets, but you're gonna just bend those strings, right? Bend the strings that you're fretting. So, so far we have. So that's like four times, if I'm not mistaken. You're just gonna repeat that four times. Live, Jim will play it when when he was on tour. He'll play it like this. He'll just literally just pick at each like octave. He won't do any bends or anything. He'll just do this. He'll just do that. But on the record and what Mick showed, it's like this, and it's much it's much heavier, much cooler in my opinion. So yeah, that's that part, and then th that's basically the, uh, those are the verse riffs. Um, now it's going to go back to the chorus, um, which, is, which is basically, now this is, the, this is the way they play it always live, like the earlier the riff that I showed you, basically how they play it in these, these, these chorus parts is basically like, if you watch the live recording, even in like the beginning of the song, they won't play it along to like how the album sounds. They'll actually just play it like this, like the way that you they play it basically in the chorus. So they just play it like the same thing. They don't change the variation or anything like on the song. So it goes like this. So first you're gonna do two palm mutes on the uh, fifth and sixth string. So it's two palm mutes, and then another palm mute on the fifth and sixth string. No, no, yeah, okay. So two palm mutes, and then. Wait a minute. Oh, okay, okay. What I got wrong is that, you know that riff? Actually, hold on. I got a little confused there. So I'm, I remember, uh, oh yeah, so the, that riff? That's actually a pull off. So it's going to be instead of like, I'm not sure, actually. I mean, you could play either way. It kind of doesn't sound like they're doing a pull off on the record in the beginning of the song and the other parts of the song. But I'm pretty sure that in the lesson he did a pull off. So just play it either way. I mean, that's the thing with Slipknot songs. It's kind of hard to uh, hear what they're doing. Um, hold on. So, yeah, it's a pull off. And then the same thing. So yeah, it's like it's, instead of just straight up picking the first fret, it's it's pull off fifth and sixth string, and then you're gonna pick. So yeah, that that was my mistake. I'm pretty sure it's a pull off. Now we're gonna get back to the riff that I'm actually doing. This is the during like the the chorus riffs. So it's it's gonna be. Back to what I was saying, it's going to be, um, so, um, two palm mutes on the uh, fifth and sixth string, just straight up open, and then you're going to do a pull-off, like the pull-offs I showed you before, on the fifth and sixth string on the first fret, so, so far we have, so yeah, two palm mutes on fifth and sixth string, and then pull, pick, pick the first fret, fifth and sixth string, and then pull off. So then after the pull off, you're going to do another pa one palm mute on the fifth and sixth string op open. And then you're going to fret the first fifth and sixth string on the first fret again. So yeah, that's how that, that works. So it's just like palm mutes, pull off, then palm mute again, then first fret. So, um, that's basically the chorus riff, and then they go back to this. So they're going to go back to that. Now, arguably, I got to give my leg a rest. Now we're going to get to the hardest part of the song. I'm still practicing this myself just to get it perfect, just to play it as smooth as possible. But this is probably one of the hardest riffs that Slipknot has ever made. Um, it's going to take a while to teach you. It's a lot of frets. 
Um, there's two, three. First, you got to play it single notes, then you got to play it chords, and you got to play it palm muted. So it's very uh, strenuous. But um, this is basically after the uh, that verse, it's gonna hit the chorus again with the uh, whatever. It's gonna hit with that again. So then the next uh, thing is gonna be Paul, rest in peace. He's gonna open up with uh, his that riff that I'm about to show you. But he's going to open up with it first, and once he does the first run, then Mick is going to open up with it. I'm going to try to get it perfect right now and just show you guys uh, what, what go, what's going on or whatever. All right. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of complicated. I still need to practice it myself. But basically what the riff is, is first time, the first run is going to be a single note. The rest is going to be chords, and eventually it's going to be palm muted. So you're going to play it with single notes once. Once Paul opens up and then after he plays his first run of the riff, fir first run, after, you're going to do this. So it's going to be, you're going to pick the eighth fret on, this is all on the, this is the, on the biggest string and then eventually the single note is going to be on the A string. Uh, so eight, seven, six, then on the uh, A string, the set, this string, there's going to be seven, six, and then you're going to go back to the eighth fret on the uh, biggest string, and then you're going to play eight, seven, six again. So, so far we have, so, and then once you play the six, so like, So you're, you're, once you hit that this note, you're going to continue down to the 5th fret on the 6th string. And then you're going to continue down to 4. So, so far we have... So that's what we have. So once you're at the 4th fourth, the fourth fret, so 8, 7, 6, 7, 6, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. And then you're going to on the 5th fret of the A string, on the string below the biggest one, you're going to play 5, you're going to play 5 and then 4. And then you're going to go back to 5 on the 6th string. 5 and then 4. Then you're going to go to 3, the 2nd, the 3rd fret, and then this, and then the 2nd fret. So, so far we have... It has to end. It's the riff starts on the eighth and fret and ends on the second fret. So fast we have. So that's how that goes. Now you're gonna play the chorded version. Now this is basically just the same riff with chords, except it's kind of well, you obviously got you got to play the chords like this on here. So just think of it as like the single note, except you're playing with chords. So like. When you're when you're playing on the A string, right? You have to play the chords instead of single notes. So here, when you get to here, this is gonna be this the, just like seventh fret on the A string, and then the uh, the ninth fret on the on the D string, the, the string below it. So it's like so yeah, and then first that, and then you're gonna move it down a fret. So that's gonna be sixth fret, uh, eight eighth. 8th fret, so 6th fret for the A, and then 8 for the uh, D, so, and then when you move down, it's going to be 5 on the A, 7 on the, uh, 5 on the A, 7 on the, um, the D, and then you're going to move that down a fret, so that's going to be 4th, 4th fret on the A, 6th fret, if I'm not mistake, mistaken, on the uh, D. And then you're just going to move down. And you're going to play that four times after you do the single note. So then then you're once you play that four times, which is arguably like the hardest way to play because it's open and you could mess up. Yeah, it's, I mess it up. It's easier to play it palm muted, which I'm going to show you later. So um, you play this four times, like, or whatever. 
now you're gonna play it palm muted, which is a little easier than chords, but harder than the single notes. Um, so it's basically gonna be that same riff, right? The except you're gonna play it palm muted. Like this is obviously gonna take place on the fifth and sixth string, palm muted, down picking, preferably. Like it's best you down pick this. I know sometimes they'll alternate pick like some parts of it. Even if it's a generally hard riff, like even live, like you can see them struggling with some of the parts, especially playing it open because it's just a very hard song, but um, or whatever. Cause it's like on the record it's perfect, but like live you can hear kind of nuisances even in the lesson that he did it was kind of like not sounding right but um yeah now you're just gonna play this palm muted so it's the same chords except you're playing a palm muted and um so then you're gonna, after you play that four times, so you play the single note, you play the uh, the chords, the chorded version of that riff four times, and then after that four times, you're gonna play the palm muted version. You're gonna play that four times, right? And then after that, it's gonna open up when Corey does this like little bridge thing before like the last chorus. Uh, He's gonna do this. Um, uh, Mick, this is all taken, this is chorded. This takes place on the fifth and sixth string. So it's gonna be second fret and the third fret and second fret. So first is gonna be, you're gonna alternate between the two. First is gonna be the third fret and then second. So you're gonna switch between the two. So it's, Three, two, three, two, and then you're going to basically slide up to here. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, so this is the eighth fret on the uh, A string, the string below the bigger string, and then ten fret, tenth fret on the D string. So you're gonna do this. So so far we have. So once you get that power chord there. Then you're gonna slide it down one fret. So that's uh, seventh fret on the A string, ninth fret on the D string. Seventh fret, ninth fret, yeah, okay. So, and then you're going to play a chord on the fifth and sixth string after that on the eighth fret and then the seventh fret. So, so far we have. And that's how it goes. Obviously, all down picking and whatnot. Um, but yeah, that's that's that. And then after he sings, Corey Taylor sings whatever he sings. The next part is gonna go like, uh, as for what I remember and what I could hear in the in the record, um, it sounds like this is just a single string riff, right? So it's on this the big the biggest string only. Like I said, with the pull off. So it sounds like he's doing this. So it's that same riff, just the tremolo pick on the uh, bigger string. Same riff. That's not the one. Uh, yeah, make sure to get the pull off on the first fret. And then you're going to do the open. But then the second time, it sounds like he's kind of doing a bend on the first fret. Like. Uh. So it kind of. It's like that first riff at the beginning with the pull off. On this, on the biggest string only. Except that you're, like, in, the second time it kind of sounds like a bend. And then, and then the part after that when he's like, "I'm the push that makes you move," and then he screams. It's that same riff, the palm muted thing. And that's gonna be re repeated several times until the end of the song, like literally. That's the last part of the song. It's just gonna be repeated till that end of the song, and that's it. Like it's not gonna be, not gonna be any any different riff for that. For, and that's it. 
so yeah, that, that was my lesson on surfacing. I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, little lesson that I gave. I hope it was informative, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.